Hello guys, my name is Carlos. Today I'm gonna explain you how to use Maven Profiles per environment with Spring Boot 2. Uh, I've been doing some videos uh, related to Spring, um, Catchbase, Spring Data, how to use Amazon Web Services uh, with Tomcat, Jenkins, and many people ask me about uh, the profiles, if I deal with the prof how I deal with the profiles. So I create this video for, for those. Basically, this is a Spring Boot REST project that handle the application properties per environment using Maven profiles. Then uh, it comes the question, which profile? Because there are two kinds of profiles. We have the Maven profiles and the Spring profiles. Uh, here is the, some code, how to use the Maven profile, clean install minus p dev from the command line or from Eclipse. And the Spring profiles, this is basically the, the code. Uh, the difference is one is done at build time and the other one at runtime. So the answer which one to use depends on your requirements. But I create a good rule of thumb. Basically, if you need different artifacts, then go with Maven profiles. If it's just a real configuration that can be set after the artifact is built, then go with Spring profiles. So Maven profiles would provide you a build time solution, while Spring profiles will provide you a runtime alternative. Okay, so about my project, it's an Spring Boot 2 project. Uh, it has just the web and Tomcat. Uh, I'm using Java 8, Tomcat 8.5, and maybe. I just expose one method to test my configuration. Uh, also here, I put other alternatives that, that you can use if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna use the Maven profile. For example, this guy explained how to activate the Spring property files with Maven profiles or you can use the Maven copy rename plugin, uh, right? I also put here a useful documentation. It was for me because I read a lot of documentation. Uh, so the documentation is about the automatic property expansion using Maven. So it changes in Spring Boot uh, one five, I think, 10, and then Spring Boot 2. So we use the the add instead. Um, basically, there if you inherit if you don't inherit from the started parent, you need to do these these changes, right, in your POM file. Then it has the relaxed binding too. So it's just deal with the name in the property files. It's really cool, really cool. Then we have the externalized configurations. How to deal with the with the with the application properties that comes from other parts of, of your application with the Spring. Then the traditional uh, deployment. So basically it's like you create a WAR file and then you put in a container, uh, maybe using uh, Jenkins, right? So this changes the this part in the code. I'm gonna explain later. And this is the Spring Boot 2 release note. Basically they put all the changes that they create since the 1.5. Okay, so let's go. Uh, okay, so I have as well additional useful useful links that I just mentioned: how to install Tomcat, how to install Jenkins, how to configure Jenkins, and also I create a troubleshooting section. Okay, so let's go to the code. So everything, like 90 percent of of this uh, problem, it's in the pom. You should deal with the pom file. So you have your group ID, your artifact. This is the most important part. Then, ah, I like to define properties. Okay, so this is my Java version. Then here, I remember that part that says if you inherit from the parent, yes, I'm using the parent. It's really good, a really good starting point. So here I put the version. This is the, the two milestone basically of Spring Boot. Uh, I'm using these dependencies, the started web, as I mentioned, and the Tomcat. And the scope for the Tomcat is going to be provided. Okay, so this is my Maven profile. So basically, you create profile as you usually do. So I have four profiles, local, dev, QA, and production. Uh, I create two variables for each one. It's called override profiles. And I, I, then I, I will print the current profile. That's why I put the name here. This is local, this is for dev, this is for QA, and this is for prod. Okay, so then we go to the build section. I put a name for my war. Uh, 
okay, here. So this is the Maven resources. Uh, here we deal with uh, copying the resources to the output directory. What I don't want is to put the the profiles files. So here are my profiles. So I just want I want uh, Maven to copy just my application properties. So exclude my profiles, right? Then I'm gonna use the Maven filtering. So basically, I'm gonna tell a Maven that use these variables that they are in my prop in my overrides files to put it in my application properties, right? So that's why here uh, I'm I'm using that that variable according to the profile. So this is a Spring Boot Maven plugin. So and this is uh, some this is something additional I put here is to print the current Maven profile when I, when we build using Maven, right? So it's gonna print my current profile. It's, it's okay. So then with the code, uh, we start with the actually where's the entry point? Okay, here. Yeah. This is my Spring Boot application. As I mentioned, I'm gonna stand a Spring Boot uh, initializer because I want traditional deployment. I'm gonna print my Catalina home variable just for testing purposes. Uh, what else? Then we have, okay, this is my main uh, configuration class, let's say. It has the enable configuration properties. And here is the list of my settings. You can place your bins here as well. So I just have one custom, custom settings. So let's go there. So my settings, it's a component and then you should put a configuration property. Uh, I'm gonna use a prefix uh, called custom and I have, I defined four variables, server URL, server port, debuggable, image quality. Uh, uh, here is the getters and setters. So what it's, uh, oh, okay, this is my controller, but just for, just to, to hit the server and print the variables, right? So this is my application properties, as I mentioned. Uh, here, uh, this is the prefix, this is the variable, um, this is the new placeholder, it's not the dollar one, this is the add, so this is how to differ with the Spring uh, variables, with the Spring Boot. Uh, the cool thing of this approach of with Maven profiles in the way that I'm doing is like, a, for example, you can have a, a variable that apply for all the environments and you just need to put he here, for example, the image quality height, it's gonna apply for all. In case that uh, at any point in time you need to change that, okay, you just create the variable here and override with the profile, right? So in the profile, for example, for dev, I have dev, 80 and true. For example, local, it's local host, 8080 80 and true. So yeah, I put different variables in order to test. And then I have my logback configuration where I put uh, everything in my standard output and, and a file inside my Catalina home uh, logs uh, folder. Okay, so let's uh, let's test this configuration. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to run configurations. So, okay, so I'm gonna compile to, with the profile dev. Okay, it's compiling. Okay, mm, yeah, this is what I what I mentioned. Oh, it, it moved. Wait a second. Okay, here I'm printing. I'm printing the current uh, Maven profile, so it's it's okay. Let's make sure that it's okay, right? Okay, there is no, there are no logs here. This is my project, so I'm gonna go to the target. I should open the web, but this this file is the same. So web inf classes. Okay, remember that I exclude the profiles. Okay, so now I have just my application properties. So just to make a comparison, look, this is how my application properties look in the code. So this is the variable, so I, what I expect here is like a day place, the profile that I set, right? So here, let's check. Okay, so yes, this is dev. So till now, everything is okay. Uh, so let's run. Yeah, I have some problems with my Maven to Eclipse plugin, so that's why I put in my troubleshooting, but uh, let's make sure that here, my profile, this is just Eclipse, eh? then everything is dev, okay. So I'm gonna run, so I compile, refresh, I'm gonna clean, 
because I was testing here. Okay, so let's check it out. Let's wait a second. But it have the depth override, so RP depth 80 and true plus the high, right? I don't know why it takes longer. Maybe because of the video. Ah, okay, yeah, it's started. Okay, so here you can see that it says dev, so it's okay. But just in case, as I mentioned, I create a web service to print again. So it's not gonna return anything, okay, because I haven't put any in the response body, but here I'm printing the variables. So it's okay, it's dev. So now, uh, let's check. So here you can check now the, the logs is the file. So let's change. Now, what I want, so I'm gonna stop with this. What I want, for example, is in production, and I'm gonna change it to production. Okay, so what I need to do is here to compile to production. You can use uh, the command line, yes. but I'm just using Eclipse, so let's say here I'm gonna put prod, right? So I'm gonna compile for production. Okay, go. So, what I expect from production, what is production? Apriprod 18, right? Okay, so I'm doing the other change here. And it's compiling properties. This is just for Eclipse. Let's wait a second that it finishes. Okay, it's done. Play and close. So here, just make sure, as I told you, I'm bringing the profile just in case it's production. It's okay. Okay, but let's check it out here in the project. Have my pinf. Yes, production, right? So everything is okay. So it's gonna work. So just I just compiled. So I'll now refresh clean and then start so yep that I think that's all so let's wait that uh, it's loading you can use for example uh, uh, Jenkins so you can put this this command line uh, right here right uh, Clean install minus p dev. You can skip uh, skip tests. You can add more profiles as well. Um, yep. Let's wait for this. Okay. So look, it here it says production. So yeah, it works as expected. So thank you very much.